In this video, I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with augmentative and alternative communication apps like this one running on, a, on an iPad or some other tablet. And I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with the concept of a key guard, something that helps people with motor limitations uh, utilize these apps. What I want to do with this video is demonstrate to you why it's valuable for you to start thinking about printing your own key guards rather than purchasing them commercially. And I'd like to illustrate that by giving you a quick story. That is, I purchased this key guard for this app from KeyGuard AT. It's laser cut from an eighth inch sheet of, of acrylic. And the only, if I remember correctly, the only option for mounting this key guard are these tabs that are supposed to slide under the edge of a soft-sided case. So I ordered this. Um, they, didn't they didn't specifically call out the case I had. They instead uh, told me to, to reference another equivalent case from another manufacturer. I don't know if that's why I, uh, what happened happened. But... Once I got the key guard, I put it in place. By the way, I find it very difficult to get these tabs in and out, even in a soft-sided case. So it's very hard to swap this style of key guard without getting, well, things you didn't expect like I just got there. Anyway, it uh, looks nice and clean, uh, but it doesn't fit well vertically in the case. So I can easily slide the key guard up and down, which might get in the way of its actual use. So that was $70.70 for this key guard, and it's kind of a pain to get out again if I had to swap in another key guard because I was using a different app or the this app with a different layout. Anyway, I went ahead and printed a key guard. This is the one I printed. It has no tabs on the side. But instead, because the size of the key guard is slightly larger than the size of the case opening, I can just wedge it in to place. And it holds great. It's not going to fall out. It's not going to move up and down or side to side. And when I want to pull it out again, all I do is pull it out. Put another one in place. Just wedge it in. Now, granted, this is something that works primarily for soft-sided cases. But there are other possible ways to mount a key guard, and let's talk about what it would take to print one for your needs. This one, as a, this one cost $70.70. This one cost a dollar to print. When you're only spending a dollar on a key guard, then if you make a mistake, no problem. Just change, correct the thing that uh, went wrong, print again. If I make a mistake in specifying a $70 key guard, I will probably just live with it. Well, let's stop just living with our mistakes and let's get what we really need. So let's talk about what it would take, what the process is for printing your own key guard. The story actually begins at the volkswitch.org website, a particular page on that website that uh, we'll include in the description of the video. But for now I'd like to just jump into the process of designing a key card. And to do that all we need is the free open SCAD program that you can download from the web and instructions are there on the Volkswitch website and a program that was designed by Volkswitch called KeyGuard.SCAD. When you first start OpenSCAD and bring up this program, you'll see it, something that looks like this, which is sort of a, a basic KeyGuard layout. And you're simply going to choose options from pull-down lists that describe the actual needs you have. In this case, we're going to design that key guard we saw a moment ago for that iPad uh, running touch chat. So from the tablet section, we'll just say it's an iPad 2. 
we're going to leave it in landscape mode and we're going to expose the camera and home buttons. Items like this, swapping the camera and home button, those are all described on the web page why you would want to do that and when, but we're not going to do it in this case. The tablet case itself, yes, we have one, and its dimensions are 165 millimeters wide, or high rather, and 215 millimeters wide. It also has a corner cut in a radius of five millimeters. So we want it to fit really nice in that case, so we want corners that are cut that way. That's it, that's it for the description of the case. Basically we're describing the opening in the case. It's height, it's width, and any uh, circular corners that it may have. Now we're going to describe how the Touch Chat app is laid out. And you may remember that there was a there was a message bar at the top, and below that, there was a very simple uh, command bar, which just had a choice of vocabulary or a separate menu option in there. What we're going to do is we're going to specify the height of each one of those, and we will have measured that with a ruler or something. In this case, the message, the message bar is 11 millimeters in height, and we're going to expose it for use. The command bar that has vocab and menu in it is eight millimeters high, but we're not going to expose that. We're gonna go ahead and leave it as it is, covered. There is no lower message bar, there is no lower command bar, so we just leave their heights at zero. And we're done largely with this section. Uh, in the key guard that you saw a moment ago, we did change the slope of, these, of the message bar opening to 60 degrees. And by doing that, what we have now is we have easier access to this message bar. So rather than this being a, a vertical cut down into this space, it's a 60 degree slope. How's the grid laid out? Well, there are five columns and five rows. The rails between the buttons are uh, sloped at 60 degrees as well to help kind of direct the student's or client's uh, hand or pointer down into this space rather than having it be a sharp um, 90 degree cut as you would see on any laser cut key, key guard. We can control things like the width of each rail, make it wider. We can change the slope, again, all the way up to 90 if that's what we want. But it's a very, a very gentle slope down in it is uh, preferred in general. We'll take this back to five millimeters wide. We can also choose what shape we want for the opening. Do we want it to be circular? Do we want it to be a rounded rectangle? And if a rounded rectangle, how uh, rounded do you want to see the corners be of those rectangles? So you have control over all that and you immediately see the effect of your choices as you design it. There are other nice options in here, like covering certain cells, leaving them uh, covered for one reason or another, because you want to hide those, uh, those buttons below or expose them. But for now, we're just gonna design the key guard we saw a moment ago. And we'll go back to having it be a rectangular opening. Now this is where uh, you decide how you want to mount your keyguard in the opening of the case. 
what I liked about my design rather than the one by KeyGuard AT is I could simply go with no special mount at all and just squeeze the, the key guard into the opening of the case. That's not always possible. Sometimes you have cases that have hard sides to them. Um, but you have a variety of op options here. You can, for those, for those cases, for those instances where you're mounting the key guard uh, directly to the tablet and not using a case, you can use suction cups. Uh, we'd have to turn the case off here. But you can use suction cup, uh, suction cups to hold it in place. You can put Velcro on it, and you'll see little recesses put in there for the Velcro. Uh, you can even use skew, uh, screw on straps that you can purchase from KeyGuard AT or clip on straps that uh, you can entirely 3D print. There are two options for for uh, cases. One is the I'll put the case back on here. One is if you want to use the slide in tabs, and the other is if you want to use raised tabs. A raised tab allows you to uh, mount the uh, the key guard to hard-sided cases, especially hard-sided cases that have a screen protector on them, so there's no way to, to insert the, the, uh, the slide-in tabs. And if you're using Velcro or slide-in tabs or raised tabs, you have additional information you need to provide about, about those tabs. For example, how high does the tab need to come up? How long do they need to be to reach the place where you want them to be? And how wide do you want your tabs to be? Even what the distance should be between the tabs. But we'll just go with no mount at all because that's what we wanted for this key guard. All right, so what do you do now that you've designed the key guard that you want? You simply say there are two steps to it. You're going to render it. And then you're going to save it, or rather, I'm sorry, export it as an STL file. What we do with that STL file, we'll talk about in another video. But I did want you to see how simple it was to design a key guard specifically for your use.